Hello everybody, welcome to the penultimate Pester Quest live stream. Yay, we're doing Roxy tonight. Yay, in honor of Roxy I've got... Uh, I was tempted to get an actual martini, but I just filled a, filled a martini glass with water. This is like a ceramic one that I painted. Um, just like my uh, teasiest mug that I usually use. I have that too, because one... Oh yeah, there is no actual music playing on the uh, game right now. And in the spirit of Tezius, I do I do have that too because one martini glass full of water is not going to be enough for a stream. So now I just have two water things sitting next to me, both of which I painted myself, which was uh, a fun couple of afternoons. Anyway, I'm getting distracted. Also, in honor of, I always have, as always I have my little muty plush, but that's normal. And then also, because this is going to be. Because this is going to be a drunk teenage Roxy, I have my, I drink and I know things, just like Roxy. Okay, so let us do this. Mm -hmm. Alright, and what is Roxy's thing? <laughs> Friendship Warzard. <laughs> oh boy, that's a that's an interesting little owl painting. Um, but okay, let's do this. Your two drink choices, water and also water. Yes, exactly. And there's the music. You spend a good few days fucking around with your newest friends. They seem to be in their respective paths towards something. You're not exactly sure if self-actualization is a part of it, but they're trying not to be too bent up about but you're trying not to be too bent up about it. This, this Earth's friend group seems to have a lot of uh, interpersonal complexity. Um, inter, inter, <laughs> interesting that they say this Earth's uh, friend group, because I don't think... MSPA Reader hasn't really figured out that this is a different version of Earth yet, so that's an interesting little phrasing there. Like, they, they still think that we're, like, in the future or something, which, which we're about to be because we're about to go see Roxy, but that's neither here nor there. Anyway... Little, little continuity error, maybe, there? Anyway. To be fair, you do only really know half of the friendship quadrangle. Uh, it's probably past time to meet the other two corners of it. See what all the fuss is about. Get their side of all the drama before you leap to any more judgments. Yeah, that was a thing that uh, kind of felt off about the uh, Jake route um, last week, or last fortnight. And... Like, I couldn't put my finger on what was wrong with it until, like, I saw a, uh, until, until I saw a big analysis post about it, like, a couple days after the fact, which was that they really leaned on, because, like, I, it's like, they really leaned on the Dirk Vriska, um, parallel to the point where it doesn't actually make sense anymore. Like, I've said before that, like, Dirk is to Jake what Vriska is to Tavros in the sense that Dirk accidentally sabotages uh, Jake's emotional growth at several points throughout Homestuck. But he doesn't do it exactly the same way as Vriska. In fact, very much not so. Like, really the way Dirk screwed things up for Jake is just by, you know, pursuing him relentlessly to make him his boyfriend. And, that's, and that got Jake, you know, all in a tizzy. Um, you know, it's not like he was Vriska. He, like, he wasn't trying to, like, Vriska was trying to make Tavros something that he wasn't. You know, he was trying to, you know, she was trying to make Tavros, you know, like a big epic hero guy, uh, like the summoner. And, and that's not at all what Dirk was doing with Jake. <laughs> like, like he did not send Brobot there to torment the poor kid. And anyway, <laughs> anyway, back to Roxy. To be fair, you only really know half of the friends of Quandrail. See, well, uh, before you leave to any more judgments. You fall a lot about what you said to. Whoop. You fall about a lot about what you said to Jake and what you wanted to say but didn't. Your shame at the thought that you might also be airing passively on the side of friendship sloshes uncomfortably on your belly in your belly against the fear that you may be choosing too much. Wanting too much? Changing too much? Because you thought a lot about what Jade said to you, too. That's probably why you bothered to get Roxy's address from Jane. You can't exactly stop making new friends, because you aren't ready to think about what your purpose would be without that. 
but maybe you could do it the old-fashioned way this time. Showing up on somebody's doorstep via the accepted human method of following directions to their domicile, specific government assigned number, seems like it might be a better a better start than, oh, just zapping directly to them when they're taking a shit or something. Which is which is definitely a hypothetical situation and not at all something that happened to you recently. <laughs> anyway, you came up with a plan and everything. You're not a real mailman that you know of. But you've grown to appreciate and respect the profession, so you don't mind LARPing it once more. You wonder briefly if there might be other guises under which people might be up up to another person's house and knock on their might go up to another person's house and knock on their door. But almost none of your friends ever leave their fucking rooms, so you sure wouldn't know. You zap down the street from her house and walk up to the walk up the scary looking driveway through the trees, over a bridge and up to her door. I wonder who's going to answer this door, because it's not going to be Roxy, because Roxy is 400 years in the future. Okay, so not exactly a normal human method. What, were you supposed to stroll all the way to New York from Jane's place? She offered you bus money, but then remembered her fortune is tainted. <laughs> she vacillated between giving you every single one of her dollars and burning it all in a symbolic bonfire until the two of you landed on moving it to a new... Hopefully untraceable bank account. You're really not sure how deep the batter witch's surveillance goes, but James seems satisfied at least. She's going through a lot. You know how it is, having to endure huge life upending bouts of information being tossed at you more or less weekly yourself. So yeah, you skipped a step in your uh, male personally sojourn, but you made it to Roxy's house in a respectable manner, which was the whole point. You're gonna make the fuck out of a good you're gonna make the fuck out of a good first impression. You knock, and you wait. Ooh. Adult Rose. Nice. The person who comes to the door is not Roxy. At least, she doesn't look like the photo of Roxy Jane showed you. Oh, fuck. Unless Roxy's a catfish? You did not expect this. Oh, it's you. This could be interesting. <laughs> catfish Roxy. <laughs> uh. Hey, it's Adult Rose. <laughs> He's like, this is the most we've ever seen of Adult Rose. The only time we ever saw her was, um, was like in the exposition flashback that uh, Dirk gave a while back, like way long ago. And even then, that like that was like an exp that was like an exp that was like a flashback inside of a dream bubble. There were like eight layers of narrative in between like, the actual events as we saw them, and and how we got that information. <laughs> I'm going back, reading through the chat a little bit. Verska wanted to make Tavros something Tavros never wanted to be. Dirk wanted to make Jake something Jake said he wanted to be. Yes, that's a very important distinction. <laughs> Sad that there's not a friend somewhere you can meet the exiles. I know, you know, I mean... I, I don't know. Like, I feel like... I feel like Me the Bound was plenty of... It's like, we, we got a nice good lump sum of... Uh, Dancester <laughs> meetups in that little bit. Yeah, we're only like 30 seconds in. We just started. Um, yes, she has eyes! <laughs> oh, it's you. This could be interesting. You blink. Is you. She got that part right. Do you know her? You scour her features. She does seem familiar, like a friend you almost had, or did have, very long ago, or moderately long ago, depending on the perspective you're looking at that time from. You wonder, have you two met before? And, and does she know? Because, like, she's still a seer of light, right? She probably has, like, some intuition about what's going on, right? No, we have not. Nor was I expecting the pleasure. Ah, shit. You thought you were onto something for her once. You wonder how many levels of memory are buried, twisted under a blown synapse in your burned-out brain? <laughs> you have to move forward and give up on chasing down whatever buck-wild theory you were inching towards there. There are real mysteries afoot with this stranger. This feels like a decisive moment if there ever was one. <laughs> 
catch the catfish in a river of lies. <laughs> There's got to be another answer here. Um, hmm. Okay. Um, this sounds more entertaining. You know how this shit goes. It's time to sit down, just the two of you, and to talk about so through some hard truths before asking Jane if they want to meet for a tense but hopefully cathartic confrontation, which you'll have to film, of course. Shit. Okay, it's go time. You take a deep breath and call her out like the slick sooth you are. You know she's been pretending to be friends with Jane online. Well, this is far cuter than I expected. Both this situation and your little self, I mean. I have in no way been doing that. It's more refreshing than it... It is more refreshing than I would have thought, though, to be reminded that there are dreams with... There are dramas with stakes like these out there. In the midst of all... This. Her eyebrows pull together as her gaze goes right through you. You turn around, but there's nothing out there. Oh yeah, she's like in open rebellion against the Batter Witch. At this point. Right? Or if not now, like, she will be soon. Well, some of my moves, both personal and political, have brought my path to, my path across her uh, family. I haven't deal I haven't interfered directly with Jane's life, and I don't intend to start. Can you say the same, friend? Is there a way to justify you justify the strings you're pulling? <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> she just turned that right around on us, didn't she? I won't stop you, of course. I have my own matters to attend to. This is only food for thought, and I can see you are intellectually under underfed. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> it just might be worth your while to contemplate the repercussions of the paths you're on. Do you have any further questions, or did you come all this way just for that? You really aren't sure. Man, it seems like all you do is contemplate your path. You feel all turned around inside. Talking to whoever this is makes you feel like staying up too late staring at the moon and got all fucked up on existence till you felt too stupid to think anymore. But like in a good way. You stare blankly at her for a while and try to remember your purpose. <laughs> I will take that I will go ahead and take that as a no. Good luck, friend. I like how it's like somebody pointed out in the chat. I like how friend is capitalized, like that is just Rose's name for us. She sets the door and you turn, bewildered, down toward, down, back towards the long driveway. Well, okay then. You sure met someone. Definitely wasn't Roxy, and you don't think whatever just happened counts as friendship. So you guess that one's a loss. This one's a loss. Was it because you cheated at traveling like a regular person? Friendless and rudderless, you start the long, pointless walk of penance to... somewhere. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, Rose just gave us a little mind. Gave us a little mind, uh, thingy. <laughs> uh, friend like a <laughs> Uh, uh, Seer, Seers of Light. We are a, uh, we're a talkative bunch. Adult Rose is the wordiest person in Homestuck, and that's saying something. Yeah, yeah, that tracks. Especially if you take into account all the versions of Adult Rose we've run into, because, like, there's this one right here, there's Candy Rose, there's Rose Bot. There, there are a lot of adult roses out there all of a sudden. There's gotta be another answer here. Oh, wait. You're an idiot. This is an adult. <laughs> You've been spending too much time with marginally supervised aliens and a lonely maroon boy recently that you forgot that Roxy probably lives with her parents. <laughs> Alright. Adults. They exist in this world. <laughs> and it's 50-50 on the possibility of a stuffed grandma rose somewhere in there, if the pattern holds. It's feasible she could have told her mom about you? You play it safe, and instead of accusing anyone of online identity crime, you ask if Roxy is home? She stares at you for a moment, her lips slightly parted. You get the feeling she's not often caught off guard, and you wonder what it is you've done wrong now. Ooh, she knows. She knows. 
you ever think you have lived through every possible iteration of an emotion, and then one day a manifestation of narrative agency shows up on your doorstep to remind you that there is yet another way to experience the acute feeling of a particular loss? Um, um? <laughs> you do what you do best. You stare blankly at her, trying to figure out just what in the fuck that might mean. Oh boy. Oh, is that not a universal one? Well then, I can clarify. It is a roundabout way of saying no. She is not home, nor will she be for quite a while. Oh, oh, it's like Ro uh, It's like Alpha Rose wanted to meet Roxy too. That's that's sad. <laughs> I will offer to take a message for you, but with your bag of tricks, I think you can manage the wait. She winks at you conspiratorially, and you have never felt less like you were on a plan, plan with like you were in on a plan with somebody. This has been fun, but I'm not the one you want. I'll go ahead and make myself scarce so things can start moving along. Unfortunately for me, my path is not as flexible as yours, or hers. You've wasted, comparable, you've wasted considerable time here as it is, and I have my own preparations to contend with. <laughs> Seer of Light meets Dumb of Ass? Yes, quite so. Scoot along before you touch something you shouldn't. She shuts the door and you stand, blank and useless on the doorstep. Imagine if you just took Adult Rose to Roxy. I mean, it's possible we did break out every rule in the book to give uh, Jay the sleepover. Also, I just realized, Adult adult Rose and Adult Roxy are the only two adults we've met in Pester Quest. Unless you can't like the epilogue title screen with the... Uh, with uh, the content... Uh, with her Imperial Condescension. So that's an interesting little parallel there. Because like we ran into Adult Roxy... Way, way back in uh, Rose's route, remember? And those are like the only two adult selves. Like, well, I, I mean, like Dirk showed or Bro showed up in uh, Dave's route, but I don't think he ever had a sprite, right? Like, I think, yeah, there was never a sprite of Bro in uh, Dave's bad ending, correct? Yeah, it's like, like again, once again, like we saw him in the. Uh, we saw him, like, in the ending flashcard, but there was not, like, actual in-game artwork of him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, the, the, like the, only, the only adults that we've had, like, this, an actual, like, in-game portrait, are, I think the only adults have been Rose and Roxy, which is interesting. But, uh, okay, but... Okay, she shuts the door you stand blank and useless on the doorstep. Maybe this isn't the right house and that lady was just having a good time fucking with you? Jane had said that she hadn't used Roxy's address in forever, uh, since Roxy didn't ever seem to, ha seem to receive things she sent through the mail. And whoever this was didn't really give you any solid evidence that she knew what you were talking about either. You take a minute, a moment, a minute to consider the cryptic shit the woman who, who was very probably not Roxy's mom, well, sort of, uh, just told you. You feel like a level one bug fuck idiot, talking, taking on a side quest from an enigmatic wizard so far beyond you that you feel like you should have spent way more time grinding first. Yeah, the the ending where MSPA reader gets de defenestrated is the funniest thing. Yes, just like soaring out the window trying to figure out whether Bro is a twink or a hunk. Love that. That ending was great. Feels like that's what she was going for. Anyway. Whatever she said, uh, whatever she said was something like, "You could manage the wait." Maybe this one's an issue of time, not space. It always seems to be one of those two bastards, right? <laughs> well, luckily for you, you have power over both. Might as well follow the only lead you have. You perch on the bench over the river, running in front of the house, and fast forward, holding Roxy's name in the front of your mind. Years swirl by you in a visual cacophony. Buildings rise up around you. Lights flash red and hot. There's a rush of busy energy, the ebb and flow of a colonial tide, and in the stillness... Well, it's, it's coming. And here we are. Right when you start to wonder if you've missed her, you feel it. You wait till it feels right, and you stop. Holy shit, that was... a while? You traveled forward in time from John's era to meet Jane, you guess. So you suppose that this isn't the most unfathomable thing to have to do... do 
So, so, so you suppose it isn't the most unfathomable thing to have to do it again, but wow. The trees that surround you just the, that surrounded you just a minute ago are gone, replaced by a sea of crumbling buildings and a low skittery sound, like pressing your ear to an ant colony. The vibes out here are real bad. You hurry up and knock. Mm -hmm. Those are mysteries. MSP area can be so stupid sometimes, but that's the cost of friendship. Yep. <laughs> The door opens slowly. There she is. There she is, tipsy. <laughs> her hair's a her hair's a mess. Um, Roxy, for sure it's Roxy this time. Peeks her head out, uh, spots you, and squints at the empty street behind you. Seeing no threat, she bumps the door open with her elbow and drops a huge pumpkin in your arms. <laughs> All right. Cheers. Cheers to that. Cheers to the pumpkin. What pumpkin? This fucking... What pumpkin? This fucking pumpkin? <laughs> A non-fully realistic pumpkin. Wait, wait, wait. Pumpkins usually aren't drawn fully realistically in this series, so... Uh... Why does her sprite look like it should be holding something? Her arms are empty. Weird. <laughs> she stumbles a bit over the door jab as she does it, and you almost don't catch the pumpkin in favor of reaching for her, but she saves herself at the last moment and leans against the fra frame, unfazed. Here you go, little buddy. I appreciate you knocking. It's a lot more polite than the usual break and entering you guys do, so I picked out a nice juicy one for you. Oh yeah, she. Oh yeah, she absolutely thinks that we're uh, a Carpathian, which we maybe kind of are. <laughs> Don't go tell you what, tell anyone to try this shit though, or else I'll never get sleep again in my life. <laughs> I'll just be running produce up to my door twenty four seven, unloading <laughs> snacks to every chess guy in existence without rest. Uh, what's my opinion on uh, Roxy? Well, I mean. Roxy's one. Of, Roxy's always been one of my favorites, um, and yeah, just she always has been. <laughs> Not but you're eating noises for company. This is not at all how you thought this would go, but you honestly should have known better than to do anything with your expectations but throw them in the trash can. So you roll within, thank her for the pumpkin, calling her by her name, by calling her by name for max politeness. You can't see much over the flagrantly large. You can't see much over the flagrantly large gourd you're struggling to keep hold of, but you feel her go still. Did she stop breathing? You crane her neck to peek over the curves of pumpkin and fuck again with those expectations. You did not anticipate true terror to be the emotion constructed on her face, but there it is. What shit? Did you just say to me? <laughs> uh, you said thank you, Roxy. You open your mouth again to introduce yourself as the friend Jane mentioned, but all of your words shrivel up and, and in your horrible mouth because Roxy has flattened herself against the door frame, her head tucked down like you blinded her. Oh dear. Oh, the, the, the sprite? Super controversial. Well, I mean... Like, it's... Uh, Roxy Sprite, I mean, like, it's kind of, I mean, like, yeah, her hair's, like, all disheveled, because she's a drunk mess right now, because she's a teenager, it's like, yeah, that's, it's perfect, that's how it should be. <laughs> it's like, maybe, it's like, maybe in the future, in the future, like, we've seen what mom, what mom Lalonde looks like, and her hair is, like, you know, super neat and white diamondy in its perfection. So, yeah, it's like, I like, I like the slightly disheveled look. I, what? You're not, you're not a... You said my name. She slinks to the floor and kind of rolls back inside, shutting the door behind her. You hear nothing, then a deep heaving sob. Oh boy. What the fuck just happened? <laughs> you knock politely, just once. Hold on a minute, I gotta do something. She needs a drink. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. You hear nothing but footsteps trailing away in silence. It could be time to head out, but she told you to wait, so you do. You're nothing if not committed. 
people think the sprite looks a little flat. I mean, yeah, I guess. Maybe. Well, it's like... It's, it looks like the same... I'm gonna guess it's the same artist who did Vriska. It kind of looks like uh, the same... Kind of close to that Vriska art style. About 20 minutes in, the low slinking hum in the background fortifies itself into a more pre pre present rumble. From around corners and out of dilapidated uh, and and from out of dilapidated doors come the source, the patter of feet, a low, unintelligible whisper, and the clinking of joints. Uh, yes, and people are confirming that it's uh, Vriska's artist. Um, they also did the Peta, if I remember correctly, which would mean that they did both of the cat people. <laughs> it's people, and they look like you. Well, almost. It's more like you look like if a child drew them. Their simple frames made simpler, with softer edges. Your skin is actually skin, right? They chitter around you, and you squash your arm, and and you squash your arm meets to make sure. Yes, you aren't chitness. Whew. Wait, or is that bad? You're trying to process whether you're relieved to have the bodily makeup you thought you did, or if you're sad that the space that the space of time you thought you might have fi finally found your kin was so fleeting. <laughs> Excuse me. You don't get a chance to sort through it fully, because the new guys are surrounding you, and they look hungry. <laughs> it might well be you were the bumpkin here, so you hold it out towards them and hope for the best. They take it and the chit and they take it and chitter in what seems to be their thanks, shrink back into the night. Uh, you check them off your mental list of predators and sit for a beat. It feels like you're waiting for more than Roxy's return, like this is a moment of choice. Jesus, fuck, you went through all this effort to try to, to things a new way, and what did it get you? Nothing! You've never had such a spectacular failure to connect upon first meeting someone. What are you supposed to do now? You wait, but the familiar push against your ribcage to decide something doesn't come. What is this drive to make you choose anyway? What if you just wait, wanted to sit, your, sit on your ass and do nothing, huh? <laughs> MSPA reader gets bored again? Yep, uh, we... We avoided that one. <laughs> what if you are tired of choosing? What every choice you make takes you further from anything good. And who knows? Maybe you're supposed to do nothing. Maybe that's what your plan was all along, though. Tough guy. Uh, huh, tough guy? You don't know who did... You don't know who that little jab was aimed at. But you want nothing more than this, uh... Nothing more in this moment than, the, than to perpet... Then, then to perpetually slap the reins of choice off of your shoulders. If only they were reins to slap. God, impotent rage is the worst. <laughs> MSPA reader, let it set in. After a minute of continued seething at nothing, you feel it. Yep. And we have a choice. We're gonna get, since our first choice wasn't even with uh, Roxy, I wonder if we're gonna get a third choice in this route. It seems like a three, especially since it's so early in the route yet. Uh, but, but, okay. All right, so what are our options? Um, we can see what the chess guys know. We can give up and hang it and see if Nepeta wants to hang out. Go from one cat girl to the next. That's nice. Door's locked. Smash a window, bitch. Uh, so this is definitely the wrong answer. Well, this is definitely the wrong answer because it's just giving up on this route. But it does sound like fun, so let's go hang out with Nepeta. <laughs> what? Hang on. Nice try, can't tempt me with a fret fuck friend this time, bucko. <laughs> can't tempt me with a fun friend this time? That was... Huh. Who... Whomst? Yeah. Who's... Yeah, who's talking? Yeah, like, is that... Is that MSPA reader talking to us, or is that somebody talking to MSPA reader? They're they're typing in all lowercase, and it's huh. That's cat. You're gonna stop. Um. Huh. It's interesting. Scratch. Now scratch uses punctu proper punctuation. Hmm. Okay. So our choice is something MSPA writers is compelled to do, like making friends? Maybe. Huh. It's interesting. Very interesting. Anyway. Uh, let's see what the chess guys are doing. 
More than you know, Chungus. What? <laughs> huh. Huh. What? Huh. Well. Well, I got the two wrong choices back to back, so that's good. Means I don't have to reload that save, but uh, what in the hell is going on? Go see what the chess guys know. More than you. <laughs> hmm. Alright. Why Chungus? I don't know. We are a little... I don't know. MSPA reader is a little chunky. Oh. Weird. Big Chungus. Okay. Um. Door's locked. Smash a window, bitch. <laughs> don't tell me what to do. You're not my mom. What? What the... the fuck was that? Blinking, you feel the desire to act ebb away. It's replaced by a tingly giddiness at the victory of your... What? Inertia? You'll be kind to yourself and call it for fortitude and resolution instead. What the fuck just happened? MSPA reader rejected the choices they were given. Huh. You're gonna see this shit through. You do what you promised and wait. Hmm. Is it related to Roxy being a void player? Maybe? I, I don't know. It doesn't... This feels less voidy and more narrative based like well and void is like the inverse of light so and light is the most narratively relevant aspect so huh maybe it's a voidy thing like since we're since we're in the proximity to roxy we can just sort of ignore the narrative ignore narrative inertia in favor of just doing what it, mspa reader that is can just do whatever the fuck they want Hmm. I don't know. That's, that's the best theory I've got at the moment. Anyway, you're gonna see this or two. Shit, shit through. You do what you do what you promise and wait. Eventually, you curl up on the welcome mat and pass out like a stray kitten. At some point in the night, you open your eyes for one bleary moment as a chess guy lays a blanket over you. Oh, that's sweet. The creak of the door next to your ears jolts you awake. Towering above you is the sharp bright rays of morning uh, in the uh, bright in the sharp bright rays of morning light is Roxy. Oh shit, you're real. <laughs> Came out here so I could prove to past tipsy me that I was just a day mare or some shit, but now here you are, here I am. <laughs> so let's dig right in. Did you or did you not say some human English words include my name to me last night? You, uh, you did do that? Well, time to reckon with this one, I guess. <laughs> this then, I guess. Might still be a little buzz, so I'm just going to see how this plays out. <laughs> Please tell me there's fan art of MSPA Reader laying on the, front, on the porch. Yes, I, I do want fan art of that. Maybe. Might still be a little buzzed, so we'll see how this plays out. Stick with me. She beckons you inside, and you scramble to your feet and follow her. All this waiting paid off, didn't it? You emanate smugness in every direction as you walk, just in case there are any entities or narrative concepts around that have the capacity for feeling slighted by such a thing. <laughs> Alright, uh, let's take a look at the background here. So yeah, we got a pumpkin, wine bottle, uh, broken... Broken defenestrated wall, and and a whole lot of martini glasses, and a lot of bat and a lot of those uh, spur batteries too, of course, powering everything. Muty, there's a muty. There's there they are. Oh, and there's another defenestrated wall. And the, there are another couple of defenestrated walls back there down the hallway too. D U E X R on the fridge magnets. I'm looking at. Oh, more more alcohol. Nothing but alcohol and wizards. Yep, this is Roxy's home, all right. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, kitty. Specifically, you want fan art of the Carpathians giving them as PA reader a blanket? Yes, that would be adorable. Um, oh, sorry for bumping the mic. Oh, I waved me off. You trail behind her into the living room, explaining how you knew her name via her friends. Okay, that makes more sense, LMAO. 
and make you the one who convinced Jane of the stuff about our reality that I've been trying to get her to see for some for quite some fucking time. Benefits of being able to be there to show her in person, I guess. Aww. She stands next to the couch, her shoulders bunched up, popping her fingers. She isn't looking at you. She told me you could try you could time travel, but she failed to mention the part about how you are some kind of alien. Alien, sorry to offend. <laughs> But if I'm being real, it's not like our communication style is full and truly without gaps on a normal day. So this checks out. <laughs> she squints up her face and groans. Ugh. I'm so sorry. I'm being a jelly belly do 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 break downer. Oh, like, well, what the fuck is wrong with me? So yeah, this. There's like the there's one Vriska pose that's very similar to this too. Like, if I hadn't already caught on that's the same artist, like I probably would have like figured it out from this from this like JoJo-ish pose that they seem to like doing. Here you are. Friend in the flesh. I'm just over here whining away about my other friends whom I love very much. This is just a lot, Elmeo. <laughs> Daydreamed all the potential friend beating scenarios I thought might ever happen. Without, without all, with, with any all combos of my four whole friends whisking me off to so, to a friend of Jern. Just didn't consider a new one might show up at my door disguised as one of my little neighbors, so... Yeah, you're super sorry for how last night went down. And for what it's worth, you've made friends with, like, a lot of people. And all the friend making skills you've learned in your travels didn't save you from fucking this one up. There is no, there's no one, there's no one foolproof way to do it. You figure. These are always tweet twe the same two poses for all three characters. Yeah. <laughs> you would know as a proven fool. Oh hell, that's good to hear. <laughs> Still, I'm sorry about ditching you right off the bat. I went to find a small sip of courage, which turned into a swig of courage. And that became a whole ass bottle of courage, which is, which, as you know, can happen. So I did not so much come back outside to confront my heart. So I did not so much come back outside to confront my harsh realities. To tease. Realities. Namely you. <laughs> as I did, co as I did confront the real, the, the soft real titties of my pillow on the floor next to my, <laughs> next to my bed. Anyway, it's. Just that I've never heard my name come out of someone's mouth right next to me in real life before. That's... That's that's actually very fucking sad right there. <laughs> like, seriously, I've never heard somebody say my own name to me. That's... That's kind of awful. <laughs> you don't comment on the booze thing. Y'all just men, you don't want to come off as too preachy just yet. You try another angle instead. Would you say that's the saddest thing you ever heard get said? Yeah, I, I would, except that phrase is overplayed. <laughs> you could always try the meeting thing again. Like, acting it out? Oh, sure, yeah, huh. Of course you didn't mean literally going back and redoing it. Um, this is a salvageable situation, and you don't want to waste a redo if you don't have to. Hello, what? What you mean is you rarely get shit right the first time anyway. Might as well give each other a clean slate. You hold your fist up and knock on the air in front of you. You hope she thinks this is cool and not lame, since you just kind of leapt into it to avoid thinking too much about all your false starts. Why does she remind you of a 30s girl? Well, it, it's... Uh, yeah, Roxy does have a very, uh, like, flapper aesthetic going. Like, especially with, especially with her choice of drinks. Uh, it's like she's like she's got like this whole prohibition era um, <laughs> taste in alcohol. You don't have to worry for long because she smiles and it's brilliant. The shivery tension in her body shifts from anxious to excited as she hops a bit, getting into the moment. She breathes in, smoothing her shirt, then puts a hand to her ear. Oh, is there a knocking on my door? Whomstever could it be? She bends dramatically in welcome as she opens the invisible door and clasps her hands together as she focuses her bright gaze on you. Oh, 
my fucking G. <laughs> G. Welcome to my abode, stranger. Soon to be more than stranger. Wink, wink. Get in here and let's get to friends of two then. This might be coming out a little strong for for a typical company, but luckily you are as friend thirsty as they come, even without old goal, even, even even without old golf ball nuts forcing you to be. You introduce yourself and step over to and pretend, the pretend threshold, hand extended. Things can only get stranger from here. Yep, golf ball nuts. Roxy, ta Roxy takes in and pulls you to, into a fast, tight hug. You wrap your noodly arms around her and return it, as tight as you can. At first, you tell yourself she needs it. After all, you can feel her trembling back, her unsteady breath. A minute passes and you realize your hands are shaking too. When was the last time you just held someone? Just let yourself be held? The woman is quiet. You know it's an awkward pose, the two of you standing, draped on each other in the middle of her house. And you realize belatedly that lying on the floor there is a window like the one you fell through right before, right before you... Jesus, how did you get out of Doc Scratch's apartment? Now is not the time to think about that, but it's good. Calm. You can keep going, honestly, but she steps back and tucks a puff of hair back in place, clearing her throat. She's still looking away from you, but she's grinning. Yeah. Her, eyes, her eyelashes look like a sea dweller. Yeah, kind of. That was much better. Still friend thirsty. A couple of friendship starting pros, am I right? They'll write guides to friendship about the two of you, you say. She sits down on the couch and gestures for you to join her, so you do. Now that you're settled, what <clears throat> now that you're settled, what she said right before you did, your little skit hits your brain right in the face. Has she really never had anyone else around to speak to? Like, never? Never have I ever. What about the uh, chess guys, as she called them? The ones she mistook you for? Oh, we can communicate for sure. But not with words, really. I don't mean anything bad about them by it. They are really sweet when they aren't sneaking into my home. <laughs> Plus, I don't blame them for their ways. And the count of them being brought here by the Batter Witch and, some, and summarily forgotten. But I don't know, we're not really on the same wavelength. So I just kind of fuck, fucked with, fucked me up when I thought one of them was looking up at my eye, was looking at me in my eyeballs and saying my name like it was, like I was low. Woo. Sorry, still mega new to this. Her eyelids flutter closed as she shivers. Man, you thought Jake had it rough, but at least he had his grandma for a bit before she died. You wonder to yourself why she doesn't seem to have had anyone like that. Well. She did, but, you know, there are a few centuries between them. Finally beheld. <laughs> Quite so. <sighs> You're about to do some mental math and see if you can work some connections out, but she gathers herself and interrupts you before you can do anything too smart. Damn it. You almost had a chance to figure it out, but no. And to be clear, I can definitely see the difference between you guys now. That you don't not look like them, to be honest. It's just that you have a quality of, like, personhood to you. Anyway, the point is the resemblance is certifiable. But you're like the velveteen chess guy. The what? Just because you're soft? Oh, well, yeah, that too. <laughs> but no, you know the velveteen rabbit? It's one of the few books my mom left me that wasn't super dense and cerebral wizard fiction. Wizard. So I read it a lot before I got grown enough to really appreciate the complexities of the cerebral of the cerebral wizard genre. Like you know, I like wizard. Yeah, like you know, I like wizard actually. No, you don't know that one. But you are constantly searching for meaning in your fucking life, so you will definitely check it out if there's someone like you with it, if there's someone like you in it. And she just mentioned her mom. She's still not around then, is she? Nah. <laughs> Batter bitch killed her a long time ago. Yep. 
before I even got here. Back when society was uncollapsed and everything. But she knew I was coming, so she left me pretty well stocked with snacks and reading material and booze to last a lifetime. But I have put a considerable dent in that last category, so we shall see if her planned skills truly were up to par when all said and drunk. <laughs> you know, I bet I bet that they are. I bet that Rose left exactly enough alcohol for uh, Roxy to be drunk off her ass until the age 16 when she sobered up. Like... Like, you know, like, like that would just be, like, that would be, like, a baller seer of light move, right? Like, like, Roxy take, like, Roxy pulls the last bottle of wine out of the cell, out of the cellar, and that is when she decides to, uh, soap her up. I thought maybe I was gonna get to meet her, all my, and all my other friends, in this big, big IRL multiplayer game I was gonna kick ass at. But now, I don't know, I guess I'm not playing anymore. Shit. <laughs> it, it, it's Jade all over again. <laughs> you jump up as you put two and two together. You went to the past before. Or, well, you came from the past. From Jane's and Jake's time. When Roxy already... Which, which Roxy already, already knows. But spatially, you were here in this house. Then in that time. There was a woman who lived here then. You thought she was Roxy's mom at first, but then you maybe convinced yourself she wasn't, since a few hundred years happened between her and now. You don't know. You, you don't know a lot what's going on. Is Cat going to make a, an appearance? What, which Cat? I don't know. Um, oh, MFG, you what? Was she beautiful? Hold on, let me show you. Whoop. <laughs> Roxy roots around the bookshelf for something, and your brain starts expanding at a rapid rate. Concepts that have been hovering on the periphery of your mind suddenly converge. Oh, look, look there's a big old gun on the sofa that was hidden by Roxy before. Oh, and another cat! Here, actually, uh, uh, let's... Uh, a big-ass gun and another cat. Nice. Okay. You already knew that uh, Jane and Jake's deceased grandparents were your friends from the past, but you hadn't considered this, since you didn't know Roxy lived in the future then? Of course all this... Of course all this shit's connected. Of course that would make... Did she look like this? She hands you a book, cover open to show the author photo. There she is. Younger than she was when you saw her last night, but older than when you first met. You can't help saying her name out loud. Rose. Rose, bud. <laughs> uh, Jane and Roxy are 413 years apart. Exactly, yes. Oh my G- OMG! Why did grown-up her say that you'd never met her met before, though? Is she not the same person? Fuck the earlier math you were doing. This is way bigger than 2 plus 2. This is some serious mental calculus. You wiggle all of your brain worms at once, and it hits you. The way it felt different than normal when you hopped from Jake's house to wherever that one place was. How it happened when you brought Jake home, home again, too. Like your guts dissolved sideways. Like how they rearranged slower when you landed. Had it happened when you first landed in Jane's Yard 2, you were probably too turned around to even notice then. Well, and you were also going from Alternia to Earth B anyway, so, like, that probably felt way off. You know Roxy is super hyped right now, but you tell but you tell her you gotta check something, do some science, you'll be right back. You zap backwards again. <laughs> what did I tell you about com old, old Rose. What did I tell you about coming back here? Get your grubby time figures out of my pie before you get caught. Yes, ma'am. Sorry, ma'am. Have a good day, ma'am. <laughs> okay, she's mad, which you expected. It also felt like an everyday wiggly belly time jump, which you also expected. You pop out of there, this time concentrating on your friend Rose, just a day after you last hung out. You should just feel yourself zoom further backwards towards her, right? Off you go, and wrong. It's that feeling again. That sideways dissolvement and reconstruction of your crudely rendered bowels. Oh, it's you. Long time no see. For you, I assume. Funny thing about that. Funny thing about that is no, actually, but you'll have to explain later. <laughs> you apologize for paying her so short a visit and head back to Roxy. 
The feeling accompanies you yet again. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, I... Also, like... I was like, I like how you can tell that... That, like, the alpha... That the beta kids are younger than... Than these kids, like... Because, like, yeah, like, like this... Like, like, Rose is about 13 here, and Roxy's about 16, and you can tell that Roxy's a little older. And, like, it's the, and the same is true for all of the, uh, Alpha kids, too. Like, you know, Jane looks a little bit older than, than John, Jake looks a little bit older than Jade, etc., etc. And I assume, I assume Dirk will look a little bit older than, uh, Dave, when we get to him later. I'm imagining these sorts of teleports are sounding like the DBZA pop. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... That, that is one of my favorite gags in Dragon Ball Z Bridged, is how um, instant transmission is just... Anyway. You pop back into Roxy's living room a fraction of a second after you left. Those brain worms are wiggling at top speed. Damn, B. I, I know you don't know about this about me, but I love science... <laughs> Damn, B. I know you don't know this about me, but I love science projects. Got a whole lab and everything. I'm hex of qualified. <laughs> Want to take me with you? Oh, sorry, you already went. Fuck, there I go blinking and missing all the good shit. <laughs> For the best, to be honest, or else I would have sat here worrying, worrying that you'd never come back. Abandonment crisis totes averted for the moment. <laughs> High five. What rad science fact did you learn? Was it about my mom? You take a deep breath. You're kind of laying down the knowledge tracks a second before your brain cart rolls down them, so you're hoping this makes sense as you piece it together word by word. You think this is a different universe? Yo, what? You've met the same. You've met the one Roxy thinks of as Mom, but you also have a friend named Rose from a while ago. She's friends with Jake's grandma and Jay and Jane's grandpa, and you're pretty sure she even read you she even read you some of this uh, same fucking book at some point. But they can't be the same exact people. Not if they all look the, if, even if they all look the same. Things feel different here than they do there. Like looking at an inside out mirror with every cell of your body. Those definitely exist, don't worry. Hells to the yeah. I'm following you. Would love to gaze inside one of those mirrors and flip my shit sometime. <laughs> Would be a liar if I say I never thought about that as a general concept. Yeah, there's that little, uh, little hint of things to come. Sometime, a little hint of things to come in some timelines, because that's how that goes. It would be a liar if I said I never thought about that as a general concept. But that's besides the point. More importantly, what you're saying is I have double the moms I thought I had yesterday. <laughs> and you're also saying you can, like, go visit any and all moms whenever you want. <laughs> More importantly, what you're saying is I have double the moms I thought I had yesterday. Steven Universe, quote, quote Steven Universe. <laughs> nice. Person in chat, I think Void is one of the hardest aspects to understand, for me to understand. I think Void is one of the hardest aspects to understand in general. Because it's, uh, it's inherently an aspect that's, des that's defined by what it isn't. And so it's kind of hard to, like, pin it down that way. Just go on a mom visiting bender. No rules, just moms. And I can come along... Well, no, there are a couple of rules, but other than that, yeah. Damn, you thought you might take... Damn, you thought you might take more convincing. Look around at all my gear and cat clones in general living situation, bud. All I'm saying is none of that is particularly hard to believe. All, all, all I'm saying is none of that is particularly hard to believe. And after all the grief I endured trying to get Janie to believe me... <laughs> It'd be pretty fucking stupid to, and not to mention rude as heck for me to not believe you now. No rules, just moms could be a great Steven Universe tagline. <laughs> yep. You're my friend. Whew, that's a relief. 
you grasp at this shit. Your grasp at this shit is tenuous at best, so it's good that she is easy to win over. It's one of my best qualities. Or at least one of my biggest ones. <laughs> though, bo oh, though, before she gets too excited, one of the rules does seem to be that her mom in this universe doesn't want to be visited, though. It's kind of a big one. Oh, I see. Well, did she say why? I mean, if you're all... If y'all already hung out, there's out what's so bad about one more chill sh sesh? Unless, I don't know. It's okay for you, but... You can see her start to blame herself, so you cut her off. It's definitely not that she doesn't seem interested. More like she couldn't. She shoot you away every time you tried to say hi, like she was afraid you'd fuck shit up. Which, to be fair, you do regularly. She said she was preparing for something. You look around. Or someone. Ah, yeah, okay. Makes sense. It's funny, actually. No, I'm jerking it. No, I'm joking your leg. It, it sucks. I'm joking, jerking your leg. It sucks. But, like, situationally, it's funny. Because that game I mentioned that Janie's off destroying. A week ago, I wasn't even sure if I wanted to play. I was pretty ready to go into desperate measures to not play it at all, if I'm being totes honest. TBH. <laughs> but then when Jade said that she met you and was all hell-bent on doing some righteous spite into the whole company, I don't know. It hit me that I kind of did want to play after all. Like, I thought maybe I'd meet my mom in the game and I'd finally get to talk to this lady I built my whole ass self sense of self around. Get to see how she was in real, actual life and figure out how bad I fucked up my version of it. Well, anyway. We aren't playing, so it didn't matter. I've been trying to be a good friend and loan my Hexor skills to Janie's cause. But it hurt, and I don't know how to tell her. And then you showed up, and my options shifted like 75 more times. I barely got time to come to terms with it being okay... Okay, okay to want something before I get swiped away from me? Lol. Shit, you really didn't mean to mess with her expectations. Should have kept your mouth shut till you figured out what it all meant. She smiles at you, and you don't even and you don't even have to know her for long to and you don't have to have known her for long to know it's forced. Ah shit. You can fix this. Oh boy. Um Hmm. Alright, but uh Life Harbor I tried fit people people are arguing about which uh, aspect is more hard is more difficult to understand void or life hmm and it's like life is an interesting one uh, I tried fake <laughs> somebody said they tried fago for the first time and uh I tried Fagel for the first time. I described this by Blaine flickering to like and disliking it. So the reason I liked it is because it confused me. My friend told me that was the most ragey thing to say about Fago. That's that is an excellent description of, description of Fago. Um, uh, okay, so actual decision time. Well, pretty sure this is the wrong. This is gonna get somebody killed. <laughs> like. Like it's it it just is going to get somebody killed, um. So let's do it. <laughs> hey, who knows? Maybe her mom wouldn't mind another visit if you brought Roxy along. Like maybe she was just annoyed when it was your bothersome self. She's definitely a little sad. She was definitely a little sad when she talked about Roxy living so far away, temporally speaking. You really think? I mean, if you don't think she'd mind. I'd be one hundred. I'd be one hundred percent down, locked and loaded, to ready for family to to family bond right the fuck now. Before I get too nervous to change my mind, should we partake in a celebratory sippy before we go? She reaches under her couch and pulls out a bottle of vodka. You make a non-committal noise as you work out how to respond. You call Jake out for enabling this, but you, for enabling this, so you don't want to do the same. It's delicate though. Well, am I thinking? She'll probably have her own stash anyways. 
Why else would she have left such vast quantities of this stuff for me to reckon with? Huh. Yeah, you guess. Though maybe she meant for her... Although maybe she meant for her to bust it... Bust into it when she was a bit older. Or like, maybe for special occasions. Well, saddle up and we can add that one to the list of questions to ask her. <laughs> it's gonna be pretty far down though, I got a lot. You extend your hand, she takes it, and off you go. You choose a point a little further ahead in Rose's timeline, just to give her time to miss you, just in case. Uh oh. Oh boy. You zap into the door set to ease Roxy into it. She plasters herself to the wall next to the door, breathing heavy. You take care of the knocking part. Whew! Shit, boy! This is it. Look at all these fucking trees around my house! Hoppy shit! Old Rose comes to the door, and from the look on her face as she stares you down, she has absolutely not missed you even a little bit. Ah, my incorrigible male person. What did I tell you before? You should not be here. Or now. <laughs> her imperial bane of my existence may not be paying attention to what you do with your friends, but she's keeping tabs on me after your last visit. It isn't safe for you here, and I can't have you compromise this location. From the side, Roxy exhales. Rose turns. Oh boy. Her voice is soft and broken. Snow falling from branches. Oh. Sorry, Miss Mom. Mom Wand. <laughs> Roxy. Oh, she's crying! Oh no! Oh, this is terrible. Oh, this is... Oh, this is gonna turn out badly, though. I just... Bad feeling about this. This is so good, but so bad. We didn't mean to must bust down operations. I just wanted to meet you. No, I know. I know it. This music's a little too peppy for this moment. And despite the circumstances, I'm so glad to have been able to see you two. More than you know. But you can't stay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, no worries. I'm sorry. You have to go right now before... Shit. A light streaks through the clouds and you crane your neck to see it, but Rose grabs you both and drags you inside, slamming the door. Shit, this is bad, right? Yeah, this is bad! Fuck, she's even faster than I thought. I have to call Dave. I have to... She stops muttering to herself and speaks instead to you and Roxy with a sharp, decisive turn of her head. What's done is done. Get back before there's nothing to get back to. But... Rose touches her knuckles to Rose Roxy's cheek, and you feel like you shouldn't be here for this moment? Shouldn't have brought her here? Shouldn't have done anything ever? You never learn your fucking lesson? You do the only good thing left for you to do. You take Roxy's hand. She's still sputtering, pulling you in, pull, pulling you as she reaches towards Rose. Oh, shit. <laughs> Rose is ready to rumble. <laughs> There's a low rumble. The house shakes. Rose has pulled some ninny needles out of nowhere, and they're sparkling with energy. Now. Oh, no. Rose didn't have time to prepare, and so now and so now we've fucked up Roxy's house in the future. When you open your eyes again, you're in Roxy's version of the same living room, or almost that. You know it's hers, though it's decorated more sparsely, and there's a corner of the house that's just fucking gone. Rebuilt how the surrounding buildings were, with a rickety chess guy's patch job. Shit. Shit. You stop surveying the timeline damage and said look to Roxy. She's just standing, staring blank. Her hand is over her mouth. You're so, so sorry. You never should have suggested they do that. It's probably best for you to go. All you do is make things worse. The, the slackness in her face turns to panic. No, 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 please. I shouldn't have asked to go. It's my fault. Don't leave me. In your guts, you know that you're the one in the wrong. You are supposed to be the responsible time traveler. You don't know how to make her see this without making her feel worse. She runs around and open. She runs. She runs and opens a cabinet. And in a second, a third. Her movements more frantic each time. Eventually, she surfaces, successful. Oh, thank fuck! The booze is still here. Always looking out for me, that mom. Look, it's it's okay. We can still have fun. You don't have to go. Please don't. Please don't go. 
She's crying as she talks, her voice climbing higher with fear. Her smile is begging you. Oh my god. You'll know you'll have to look later. Check whatever corners of the internet or, her, or historical documents Roxy has lying around to see what happened. But you feel in your belly that will only confirm what you suspect. It would be better if she hated you. You're not ready to face what you did, so you take the bottle Roxy is holding out towards you. Take a long, burning swig. More, more for you means less for her, you hope, as you pass the bottle back. Regret. <laughs> well. Oh yeah, people are saying it's like Condi, Condi was a uh, Condi was faster than Rose expected, probably because Condi has like MSP Aviator from that one bad ending. Ugh. Oh, well, that was that was that was everything I was uh, worried about. <laughs> I knew we'd get drunk, of course. Yep. All right, so yeah, let's go hang out with friends instead because that's what we should have done. Bad things don't usually involve sticking around long enough to process the aftermath, but that's entirely what this is. Whew. All right, moms are cool, but so are friends. Let's go hang out with Jane. When someone says not to interfere with their plans, don't interfere with their plans. It's not just moms, you tell her. You can definitely take her to go see any of her friends she definitely has, too. She already has, too. Excuse me. What, like right now? If she wants to, yeah, you're down for whatever. Uh, is it weird to be so nervous about that? Don't get me wrong, I want to see the fuck out of some friends. Pop my eyes right on those guys. Followed, of course, by hogs. What? <laughs> Hugs. Okay. <laughs> for a second, I legitimately thought Roxy wanted to see some pigs for some weird reason. <laughs> 30 to 50 feral hogs. Exactly. <laughs> well, I mean, Roxy is like a gunslinger, so she is definitely prepared to handle 30 to 50 feral hogs. <laughs> Just a really big thing, and I'm feeling a little dizzy even thinking about, about even picking one up. It's just a really big thing, and I'm feeling a little dizzy even thinking about picking one. Yeah, you haven't met all of her friends yet, but you know just enough about the various dynamics for that to make sense. And hey, there's no need to rush. You can take her somewhere else, just the two of you. That way she can still get out of the house and see something new, and you guys can sit and talk through who, who to go see rather than leaping right in. Yeah, okay. That sounds chill. Where to, then, my cosmic taxi friend? Let's start with somewhere chill, you say. And she nods. Like many things about Earth, there are places you know exist but have no memory of ever having been to. There's just a part of your cultural knowledge, learned by your past self and later subsumed into the ever-widening miasma of your mind. You pick one of those places, somewhere that feels like, at one point, it could have been something you cared about. That's interesting. Where the fuck are we? <sighs> it looks like a forest at first, but the pine trees have been shaped by wind. You turn, and the earth in front of you butts up against the ancient stone of an outcropping. It stretches up below your feet in a long, serrated arch until it curves into nothingness. Beyond it is an endless sea of mountains, rolling and rolling, fading deep green to blue as they turn into sky. The sun is just below the horizon. Oh, it's so open. Her voice is the quietest it's been since you met her, her bright, boisterous charm lulled into awe. You ask her if she thinks this will work. <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> Buster, I've never seen a more gorgeous thing in my entire existence. We are going to take a fucking seat and soak in this nature with every one of our pores. The visible ones, I mean. Don't go getting any ideas. <laughs> or do, to BH. I could be doing naked cartwheels right now, and I wouldn't even notice, because I said pre as I said previously, my eyes are stripping in these sights. You could be doing naked cartwheels right now. Fair. You're not agile enough for that, clothed or otherwise, but you're glad she likes it here. 
The two of you sit for a while, soaking it in. This is a schedule-free life you've, le you've led, so however long it takes for her to walk, talk is fine with you. It doesn't take long, too long, though. So, you met Jane. Jake, too, if I'm not wrong. They talked about you some, but they've been more busy hanging out with you than talking about it. About you, if I'm, if I'm TBH. How about, um, Strider? He hasn't said anything about you, and I like to think he'd tell me if he got the first visitor, visitor of his whole life. That maybe he would be ready to share. He, that maybe he wouldn't be ready to share with me. It's a pretty big thing for me, and for him, it'd be even bigger. She seems poised to continue hypothesizing about him for a while, so you go ahead and tell him, tell her no. You haven't met him, but you sure have heard a lot about him from Jake. Oh, lol, yeah. What? Do I, what, would you get a different version of things from her? LMAO. How far in this drama you want to get? You're already pretty far entrenched, as far as you can tell, so she might as well fill you in on the whole rest. Oh yeah, this does, this does feel very undertale -y. This uh, little setting, like we are basically we are basically in the good ending of Undertale. Uh. Okay, so I'm about to lay it all out there for you because I trust you, and also I don't know what to do about it all. And some <laughs> and some farm fresh opinions might be just what I need. The good ending of Undertale, exactly. The way she turns to you and clutches her hands together, launching directly into the story, you'd never think she was new to, to slumber party gossip. Whew, we got quite the love triangle going down in this friend group. Janie and Dirk are both into Jake, which, like, fair. <laughs> He's very sweet and a hunk no matter how you slice it. Jake, as you may know, is a wild card here. No idea who he might go for, which is also fair. If I'm to continue, if I'm going, if I'm to continue to be a referee here, because Jane is a stone cold fox, luscious babe going hecka places, and Dirk is, whew, he's just about perfect. So, she trails off and wrinkles up her nose as she looks back out over the mountains. Her gaze is heavy with longing. Excuse me, the Jake stakes. Yep, we are back into the Jake Stakes, boys. Welcome back to Act 6. Hmm. Don't you, hmm, me? What? Just seems like she's leading up to her spot in the quadrangle, is all? Yeah, well... I'm in there. Like in the last one I meant... Liking the last one I mentioned. Ah, okay. What, you're doing it again? Okay, just for a minute, you couldn't tell which direction she was heading. You thought she might be jealous of Dirk himself, the way she looks, the way she looked when she said all that. But it's that she has feelings for him? You're just trying to keep up. <laughs> Roxy laughs and covers her face. God damn, called out here on the top of the fucking world. You're not wrong, I guess. In a way. Not to continue the vicious call out, but earlier it, early it was her mom... But early it was her mom she said she tried to be like, and now it's Dirk? You're like the president of the universe at trying to figure out who you are and trying on different ways of being to see what fits, so no judgment there. It's just that it seems like she has a lot of questions about who she wants to be, which is legit as hell. That's life, baby. Babby. Yeah, I guess that's the whole thing. I, Yeah, I guess that's the whole thing, you know? I wanted to be like her because she's my family and like the only person I knew about for a lot for so long. Then I met him and it's like, oof, there's more unlockable options? Who knew? Maybe I could have... I don't know. I do have feelings for him, to be sure, but you're right. Sometimes with him it does get all mixed up. You're never not sure if you want to be somebody or be with somebody? You ever not you ever not sure if you if you want to be somebody or be with somebody? That's a thought. I mean, I like the me I made from nothing, and I don't want every single piece of his bullshit, of course, but he's like this shadow just out of my range of vision, like some kind of what if. Me if I had just been Ugh, I don't know. I don't know if this makes any fucking sense out of my own head though. 
<laughs> when I played this role, I was thinking they were trying to apply Roxy was non-binary. Well, yes, that's exactly what they're doing. <laughs> like, they're sort of like, th this is absolutely stuff that was written in the context of the epilogues. What's that you said about that Turnway's mirror? Let's hop in that universe jump and train to see where it takes us. Metaphorically, I mean. I'm not ready to move a, move a single ass cheek off of this bitchin' rock yet. It's all metaphorical anyways. Well, not the multiple universes thing. That's pretty much a fact, as far as you can tell. But the turning yourself inside out bit. Whatever it is about him that, she's feeling pull, that she feels pulling at her. This thing she wants for herself. It's probably bigger than him anyways. He's just the person who made her notice it, same as it was with her mom. And anyway, it turns out lots of options are unlockable once you realize those locks were in your brain to begin with. That's neat. Okay, so yeah, we're just we're just having a full-on transy conversation now at this point. Damn, buddy. Is this what it's always like to talk to friends face to face? Falling up piles of deep, meaningful truths left and right? Or is this just a you thing? You have absolutely no way of knowing, but you do know what that happens a lot. It happens to you a lot. It's different every time, though, and it never gets old. Good, because I feel like I got this layer, I uh, let this got layer one of all my thoughts and feelings about this stuff. Good, because I feel like this got up one la layer of all my thoughts and feelings about this stuff. A little afraid to dig deeper, but if you're there with me, maybe we'll find some shit in there that's not just big, empty question marks. <laughs> well, they realized, like, oh yeah, it's like, they, they were trying to figure out if this route meant Roxy was non-binary because they just totally forgot that the epilogues existed. Yeah, that's valid. It's a good thing to try and get out of your brain sometimes. <sighs> shit, yeah. You can, you can go for round two whenever. Your game. Keep digging the identity all day if she wants. Though they did come up here to decide who to visit, right? Does that mean the choice is Dirk? God, I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe. Eventually. I want to see three. I want to see all three of them, plus another friend I haven't mentioned yet. But you'd get along with her because she's also an alien. Huh? What? Who's Roxy? Oh, oh, Calliope. Oh, that's, yeah, it's like, yeah, she's been talking to Calliope by this point. But I might want to start with my kid mom who is visitable. Not yet, though. Lol, I never would have thought I'd be putting this off any longer than I had to, but... Me and you has been one of the best things I ever did. Want to sit and stew in this friend's soup with you for a bit longer? And then savor the bites of my other friend's soups when I can. However ready to eat or not I might be. Shit, this metaphor is getting away from me. <laughs> Can you take over? <laughs> you're not sure how salvageable it is, but yeah, you're down to simmer with her as long as she wants. And you think she and her teen mom will get along very well. Shared, t shared mom trauma and drama included, whenever it comes time to introduce them. She wouldn't worry about being perfectly ready either. You haven't skipped ahead ahead to see who she becomes, but you're pretty confident that she, that she has it in her to be someone she can be proud of and comfortable being. Someone that can look back on this Roxy with kindness, too, no matter what choice she ends up, she ends up making. You're going to make me cry again, please no. <laughs> Ooh. Also, not that I'm going to forget... Not that I'm going to forget to today ever, but I should document... She pulls her phone out and uh, holds it up to frame her shot. She is glowing in the light of sunrise. You watch her. You watch the sun. You watch the fog curl through the valleys below. Okay, now a selfie. She, dra she drapes her arm over your shoulder and points the camera at the both of you. Work it. Oh yeah, this one's cute as fuck. She messes with her phone, opening a chat with someone whose handle you don't recognize. You wonder if she sends the photo their way if it's the alien friend. That'd be cool if Roxy is friends with a totally troll you hadn't met yet. <laughs> well, um... <laughs> it's a complicated uh, little uh, expression there. Hey, 
Yeah, uh, yep, it's, yep, it's Calliope. Hey, you there? I get, uh, I guess not, but it's okay. I just wanted to say hi. I know we didn't talk much about the game not being on anymore last time we got to chatting, but I know we were both, we were both feeling it. And I, and I got so many more updates for when you're back online, so get hype. And check out this, at this choice ass. P view my peep it R, view, view, uh, uh, now check out this choice ass view on people right now as a preview. Thinking of you, T, thinking of you, T, totally. It's time to get comfy on this rock. You may end up being here for a while, since Roxy's not quite ready to get zapped anywhere else, which you could, which, when you consider it, is fine. There's a difference, you think, between inaction and patience. There are small, weighty changes made in stillness. You, you, worried you choose too much, and Roxy, afraid she was robbed of choice from the start, meet in the middle. She pockets the phone and grins at you. You lean back on your elbows and tilt your head up towards the sky. <sighs> Chillin'. Why are the kids wrote so long? Because I have an entire update. Literally, where's the trolls updates were half an update? Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Is this sunrise or sunset? Oh, well. <sighs> Yay, the muse. And yeah, Calliope is off. You know, like, I do wonder... Yeah, I'm a little curious about what Calliope is up to in this timeline. Is, yeah, people are saying Calliope is dead by now, and maybe? It's hard to say. Like, it is honestly hard to say what Calliope's deal is right now, because... Because, like... Well, the other thing, too, was that, like, Caliborn and Calliope were always, like, above timeline shenanigans. Like, like when the retcon happened, it didn't undo anything that happened to those two. So... So, like, I don't know if anything has really changed for them in Pester Quest, if that makes sense. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing, is that, yes, our, you know, logically, Earth-C has been retconned out, so Calliope shouldn't exist anymore. But that's not how that seems to work, because paradox, you know. So, yeah, I don't know what, I don't know. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, was, like, Ultimate Dirk was also in, like, the first part. It's like they've been hinting at Ultimate Dirk since Pester Quest started, so... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. A, a version of, you know, this does exist within the Homestuck universe. Uh, so, like, there is a Calliope out there somewhere. I just don't know what she's doing. Or if there is a Calliope, maybe it is just maybe there isn't a new Calliope, so to speak. Maybe it's just the same Calliope we've known all along. Sort of like well like, like that happened with Aradia too. And Aradia's route like the Aradia that we met is the Aradia from Homestuck. Like she was like that wasn't a different version of Aradia. That was just the one that we've been hanging out with this whole time. You know, that's why she that's why she had like an adult body, because that was that was just her. Huh. Maybe the dream selves can't wake up like Jade's can't, in which case Callie could still be alive, since Caliborn shouldn't wake up to bribe Jake. That's an interesting thought. Hmm. Yeah, you can't go overthinking the timeline retcon stuff because there are no rules. It's all paradox. Yeah. Cat didn't interrupt the video. Yeah, you know, he did. He did early on, but then he stopped after a while. So, well, yeah, much like most things in the in Pester Quest, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, and we'll find out the rules for how it works when we get to it too, because the rules change every single time. Uh, real quickly, let's just look at the credits, see who wrote the songs and whatnot. Oh, the chum roll. <laughs> Tally ho down. Into the future. You vibed with rocks on the edge of a vast alpine woodland. <laughs> vast. Vast. Credits. What the... Uh, writer... Oh, Roxy was written by Equus. Interesting. Same person who wrote Equus. Um, character... Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, Haven. Haven Tyler Davis. Call it. They drew Vriska, Nepeta, and Roxy. Lovely. 
background art by Courtney Brindle. And music. And the illustrations by Courtney Brindle as well. And music, music, music. No, no, where is it? Oh, Clark Powell, who also did the Pettis theme. Nice. Roxy's theme too, even in death. Um, also, also Roxy's theme, would you believe this? Would you believe this for, was for someone else? Would you believe this was for something else? Oh, by James Roach. Um, well, yes, I would believe that was for something else, because that's how music goes. Uh, so there's a Void writer. Up, oh, yeah, there... <laughs> Yeah, the person who wrote Equus also wrote uh, Roxy, so apparently there's just a Void writer on staff. How about that? Here we are into the future. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. So yeah, that was that. Um... Uh, there was a tweet a while ago that said that Dirk's route has been delayed till April 1st, which is alarming. <laughs> it's an alarming day to put that uh, thing out into the world. Um, so we'll just see how that goes. Oh. I sense possible japes. Yeah, that's the thing. So, yeah, no, we'll, we'll see. You sense possible japes, don't you mean jakes? Ah, oh, that's good, that's good. That's a good one. So, um, so yeah, that'll be that. And then after, and then after we see Dirk's route, I'll probably just stop with Homestuck for a while because the Homestuck 2 is just not doing it for me. Like, like the last update especially, like, really cemented the fact that I just don't want to read Homestuck 2 anymore. Because everything that Terzi says is right. In fact, Terzi like literally quoted some thing, some of my actual complaints, like word for word. Terzi said literally exactly some of the same things I have said in the past when talking about why Homestuck Two isn't doing it for me. And you know, maybe it's like, oh, Terzi, Terzi said it. One of the characters said it, so maybe the writers are aware that this is a problem and things will be fixed. I just don't have that optimism. I really don't. Because everything Terzi said is true, but that's still the story we're in. Like, we're still... Like, like acknowledging that there is a problem is not the same as fixing a problem, and I just do not have... What's that? Oh, uh, oh yeah, Hive Swap Act 2. Yeah, I'll, I'll, play, I'll play Hive Swap when that comes out. If it comes out. Um... And they'll probably I should stream more often because streaming is fun. Uh, but yeah, I'll do, and I also want to just like be practiced, I guess, at streaming so that when Hive Swap comes out, I'll actually be ready for it. Yeah, joking about the problem does not make it not the problem. Um, and like, yeah, so so yeah, it's like we'll we'll see when Hive Swap Act Two comes out. I mean, hell, heck, Hive Swap Act Two might just come out in April, like, for, in just in time for 413 day. Um. Yeah. Jastronauts, joking about the problem does not make you not the problem. Yeah, well, it's, I don't know, it's, well, one of the things, too, with Homestuck 2 is that there are a lot of conflicting themes, you know, present, and I don't really know which ones they're, like, shooting for. Because, like, because, like, there's, like, you know, there's the theme of, like, character agency within the narrative versus the power of the author versus who deserves to control the narrative and blah, 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 and... And, like, all of them are just sort of running together in a way that, like, 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 and they, and they all exist in a very muddled pile. And, and, like, maybe it's just because I overthink them and, and, and I, like, I take these things to their lot. It's like, well, like, the other thing, too, is that, like, when you exam, when you start examining those themes and taking them to their logical conclusion, it all just seems pointless. Yeah. Um, 
So, like, it's like, I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll just see what happens. And, like, we'll, we'll see how Dirk is written in Pester Quest 2. Because, like, that's going to be... That's going to be, like, probably a big... Uh, it's probably going to be a bit of a... Uh, bit of a canary for uh, how things are going to go in the future of Homestuck 2. Anyway, so that's that. Um, it's like, and, and I probably, it's like, I will, like, continue to read. It's like we're going to get a couple more March updates of Homestuck 2. I'll probably read them. I might not live blog them because I don't want to live blog them. And you, and le unless you have, like, a fetishistic hate on for Homestuck 2, you probably don't want to read me, um, read about me hating on them. So, we'll just, uh, we'll see what happens. Alright. And with that, the video's over. Um, so yeah, otherwise, uh, this round was fun. Um, spent a lot of time with Roxy. Spent a lot of time talking about Roxy being non-binary. Because that's a thing now. Um, will you live blog any updates that are good, like the first one? I don't know. I, I, I probably won't, like, do a full live blog, but I don't know. It's, we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably just check out of Homestuck completely until until something changes. Really, and that's the thing. Like, I am leaving the door slightly open for like Homestuck two to like get good again, but because like Homestuck one, if you look at Act one of Homestuck, it bears very little resemblance to Act six of Homestuck. So like, who knows? Maybe in like six months, the story of Homestuck two will be completely different from what it is now, and we'll just move on and pretend all this bullshit didn't happen but you know until then i just don't want to like i don't i'm not interested in the journey that's the other thing too is that like i just don't care is the thing like i know a few people who are still reading homestuck too because they because like they hate dirk as a villain or like because like they think that dirk is a good villain and they want to see how you know how everything resolves with that I don't even have that. I just think... I just don't want Dirk around anymore because Dirk is awful. Like, he's, like, an awful villain and, like, and awful in the sense that he's not, like... It's like, how to describe it? Like, the, the problem with Dirk is that he's wrong about some things and right about some things and the combination of things that he's right and wrong about yeah it's like like the drowned man yeah it's like it was my nickname for dirk is like first of all like there that's problem number one which is that the drowned man ver bears very little resemblance to the dirk that we knew from homestuck so there's like no connection there's like no continuity of character there um like 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 in the couple updates ago there was a moment where um, where Terezi mentioned the fact that she was watching My Little Pony with Dirk and Rosebot during their uh, trip to Detritus, and for and there was like a solid minute where I forgot that Dirk liked My Little Pony because that just seemed like a fact that's completely irrelevant to Dirk as a character in the present. Um, so. Yeah, sort of like what somebody in chat was saying earlier about how they just sort of forgot that the epilogues existed for a minute. And it's like, yeah, I just, I forgot that the Drowned Man is supposed to be the same character as Dirk, because he's not. So, like, that's problem number one. Problem number two is that, you know, we're supposed to believe that, that there is actually a conflict here, that the characters have agency in their own right that is separate from the will of the author, problem is is that no they don't because they're fictional characters they're not real people like even dirk isn't a real person and then the third problem the thing that dirk is wrong about is that dirk seems to think that that you need an antagonist in a story and you just don't and like that seems to be his sole motivation is that he is acting he's acting as the antagonist because he believes that we need an antagonist and that's just a stupid reason to do things like you can have stories without antagonists very easily in fact like you can you know this like go watch go watch steven universe future new episodes coming out on friday i'll be live blogging the shit out of that when that comes out um because you know i've been loving steven universe future but like and so yeah it's just it's like i don't know what 
Yeah, it's like it's like yeah, like Dirk has never heard of Slice of Life before, despite being a fan of My Little Pony. Again, there you go. Another thing to be pissed off about. You would think a fan of My Little Pony would know better than to think that you need an antagonist for a show to be successful. <laughs> um. So yeah. Um. Uh, so yeah, as a My Little Pony man, I am offended at the direction that Dirk's character has gone. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's my hot take on Homestuck 2. But uh, yeah, and it's just like... And it's just like, d you didn't need to tell this. It's like, Dirk didn't need to tell this story, and by extension, the authors of Homestuck 2 didn't need to tell this story. Like, they could just do literally anything else, and it would have been fine. Anyway, enough rambling about Homestuck 2. Um, we'll, get to, we'll, cross that bro we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. In the meantime, see you later.